Good morning. Welcome to worship at Melville. How wonderful to be together on this summer morning, both in person in the sanctuary and online. There are announcements to be made. A couple of people have already spoken to me, so. Uh, available after the service. They're good. There's a bunch that will be good for eating and for applesauce, we figure, and such. So help yourselves, and whatever's left, we'll take to the food bank tomorrow. So. Thank you. Are there other announcements to be made? Let us take a moment to acknowledge the peoples who have lived on and stewarded these lands for time immemorial. God, help us to be thankful and to become better neighbors and stewards that we might continue to honor these lands. Let us hear again the ancient sacred words of our ancestors in faith. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness, not even the darkness of, over death, of death, has overcome it. Praise be to God, our Lord, and our salvation. Our call to worship. If only we knew how to look at life as God sees it, we would realize that everything makes its own important contribution to this world. We would realize that we are loved, precious in God's sight, of infinite value to God and to each other. Together, let us praise our God. Let all things now living, a song of thanksgiving to God our Creator, triumphantly raise. Hymn number 242 in Voices United. And all things now living, a song of thanksgiving to God, our Creator, triumphantly raised, who fashioned made us, protected and stayed us by guiding us on to the end of our days. God's banners are o'er us, pure light goes before us, a pillar of fire shining forth in the night, till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished as forward we travel from light unto light by God in forces the stars in their courses and sun in its orbit obediently shines the hills and the mountains the rivers and fountains on the ocean proclaim God divine. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing with glad adoration as 
song let us praise till all things now living unite in thanksgiving to god in the highest hosanna and praise let us join together in prayer creating, loving God. With all things now living, we gather in this worship time. We come to say our words and sing our songs, to be refreshed by being together in this sacred space, to be rejuvenated by love, encouraged by faith, renewed by hope. Be with us, God, in this worship time, amen. I have a litany of celebration that's adapted from the writings of Anne Weems. I celebrate the Church of Jesus Christ. I celebrate the church where every person of God is hailed as unique and valuable. I celebrate the church that gives me hope. I celebrate the love that exists among us, the spirit we share, the attitude of partnership. I celebrate the Church of Jesus Christ. Where we see rainbows even in the darkest of times. The next hymn, Small Things Count. It's a kind of a, a fun song, but it reminds us that everything counts. Small things count, so Jesus said. Cups of water, crumbs of bread, and so on.
scripture reading this morning is from Romans 12, 1 to 10. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone, among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure that God has assigned. For as in one body we have, mem we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we are hmm. glued together. So we are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, and the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, Hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, and outdo one another in showing honor. This is the Lord's word. Thank you, John, and uh, thank you, Joanne, for your solo. Much appreciated. For the past five years, I have belonged to the Guelph Wellington Men's Club. It's a group of 275 guys, and we meet every Tuesday morning people from varied backgrounds, activities, occupations. Prior to COVID, the average attendance on a Tuesday morning would be anywhere from 150 to 180. Currently, we're more in the 125 area, but still acceptable. And more than once, I've come away from the meeting thinking, <clears throat> What a huge amount of collective wisdom and knowledge exists in that group of retired guys, each one bringing their own particular gifts, abilities, talents to the group. It makes the point that I would like to make today that each of us has something important to offer. Not that each of us constantly feels that we're particularly wise or knowledgeable or has much to offer, at least I don't, because I have my moments when I feel anything but. For example, a Saturday afternoon a few years ago, <clears throat> it was a hot and summer day. I'd been in a show and when I came home I was tired and hungry. Before getting supper, I wanted to change into something more casual, so I went into my bedroom and took off my shirt, stepped into the bathroom, took off my undershirt, and instead of throwing it in the clothes hamper, I lifted the toilet lid and threw it in the toilet. And I can't imagine anyone feeling especially important or special or wise or knowledgeable or anything in a moment like that. But it's funny how life goes sometimes, isn't it? But take away those kinds of moments and the point still remains. There's something each of us has that's important. And whatever it is, we're called to offer it for the good of the whole. 
In his letter to the Romans, Paul wrote that collectively we're like a body, a body with many parts. And when each plays our part, the whole is stronger for it. Jesus talked about how the smallest of things have something great inside of it. For example, he said, take a mustard seed. It's the smallest of all seeds on earth, and yet within it grows the smallest of all shrubs, and it will develop into that. A shrub so large that birds can make a nest in its branches. Whenever Jesus talked about the kingdom of God, he, the emphasis was always on the smallest becoming great, or the weakest becoming strong, <clears throat> or the last becoming first, or something we hadn't even noticed, hadn't even given the time of day to, becoming revealed as the work of God. All of which is an invitation to us not to judge anybody or anything by outward appearances or size or stature or what we would call normal behavior. We're to look beyond the surface, look for the inner depth, for God may be at work in the most profound of ways, in ways that we don't see. We should never write off people whom we don't understand, people who we would sooner have go away and not bother us. British Columbia writer Ralph Milton once wrote a story entitled, You Took Me Seriously, and it goes as follows. Neil was in the boys' group at church, the boys' group that I led. Neil was, by any standards, a heller, red-haired, hyperactive, manipulative, physically strong, and every week Neil managed to effectively sabotage all my well-constructed plans for the boys' group for that evening. My feelings about Neil were, at the very least, ambivalent, and every Tuesday evening on the way home I was determined to resign from leading that boys' group. But for reasons I can't explain, there I was back there again next Tuesday leading the boys' group, and Neil was driving me wild again. A good many years later, I was speaking at a church anniversary dinner, and after dinner, a tall, good-looking young man with a shock of red hair came up to me and said, Hi, do you remember me? I'm Neil. Neil was now a social worker, and I was astounded. I found out later that his work was a genuine ministry and that he had a deep and abiding faith. You were really important to me when you led that youth group those many years ago, Neil said, and I want to thank you. But Neil, I said, you, you and I were always struggling. You were my number one discipline problem. You were a heller. I know, I know, said Neil, but I always knew you liked me. <laughs> and you took me seriously. You took me seriously. No leader could ever be paid a greater compliment. You took me seriously. You took the time and the patience to look beyond the surface and see someone else who was still growing, someone who was still becoming. A friend used to have a sign on his office wall that said, God isn't finished with me yet, please be patient. <laughs> and that's how the kingdom of God works, Jesus said, in things or people with whom God isn't yet finished, with things on their way to becoming something else, we may find it hard to see today, but take it seriously. Look again tomorrow, because you don't really know yet what's there. Each of us is a part of the body, each called to play our part. Sometimes, though, we have a hard time taking ourselves seriously. We downplay our strengths, feel as if we couldn't possibly be important to the body at all. After all, it's, I'm just little me. 
A week or so ago, <clears throat> Julia and I watched the animated movie Sing. I don't know if you've seen it, it's delightful. Buster Moon, a koala bear, <laughs> is threatened with the foreclosure of his struggling theater. So he decides to put on a singing competition. And he asks his assistant, Miss Crawley, to type out flyers advertising the singing competition. The prize is to be $1,000. Now, Miss Crawley is quite elderly, gets flustered easily. She also has one glass eye. So when she's typing out the flyer, she gets flustered over something, her glass eye pops out, bounces on the typewriter key, adding two extra zeros to the prize money amount. And before the flyers can be proofread, they get blown by a fan out all over the city of Catalonia, and they float all around advertising this singing competition with a prize of $100,000. Crowds of animals gather to audition, and Buster finally selects his contestants, and among them are a pig named Rosita, a mother of 25 piglets, a punk rock porcupine named Ash, a teenage gorilla named Johnny, a street musician mouse named Mike, and an exuberant dancing hog named Gunter. An elephant contestant, Mina, had the opposite problem. She never took herself seriously. Plagued by stage fright, she fails her audition. Pressured by her grandfather, Mina attempts to request a second audition, but free stage fright captures her again, and she settles for being a stagehand. Now, after some acts withdraw from the competition. Mina's offered a spot in the show still, but once again she struggles to overcome her fear and just doesn't have what it takes. And finally on the day of the show, disaster strikes, a flood. The theater collapses and the owner Buster Moon becomes distraught because all of his life's work and dream is gone in an instant. But at that moment, at that moment, the most unlikely contestant becomes the hero. Mina, the elephant, stands on the rubble of the theater and with headphones on, she listens to a tape and she sings her heart out. And this inspires Buster. Maybe there's hope yet. He decides to hold an outdoor show. And the local news station becomes interested and broadcasted, and soon a large audience is gathered, and Mina overcomes her stage fright and gives an outstanding performance. Things all take a turn when Mina decides to take herself seriously. Can you think of a time when somebody else took you seriously and it made all the difference? I grew up on a farm <clears throat> on, in southwestern Ontario, and the elementary school was on the corner of our farm, a typical red brick schoolhouse, all eight grades in one room. <clears throat> Report cards were issued twice a year, at Christmas and at the end of the year. And on the report card, there was a block for conduct There was a possibility of two entries, S or U, satisfactory or unsatisfactory. And when I was in grade three, my Christmas report card had a U in the conduct block, and my parents were mortified. Thomas, Thomas, he's such a nice child. Delightful boy, lovely child, good child, unsatisfactory conduct, couldn't be. So they went to see the teacher. And the teacher said, the trouble is, he gets his work done and then he bothers everybody else. 
I know, you, you, you can't imagine it, can you? No. Their solution put me on into grade four after Christmas. Load me down with work and keep me so busy that I didn't have time to bother anybody else. And that's how I come to do two grades in one year. Now, I, I suppose there were other possible solutions, certainly more punitive ones. But you know what? That teacher, and my parents too, took me seriously. And rather than being called down for my all too disruptive behavior, rather than condemning me for how bad I was, they redirected my energies. I'm not sure what that particular incident meant in the grand scheme of things, but I do know what it meant over the years to be affirmed, to have others believe the best in me, and I know that counts for a whole bunch. And in my home, I never received anything but positive affirmation. And at least from the school teachers that mattered, the same. And I know that makes a difference. Makes a difference. That's how Jesus said the kingdom of God works, because God sees not what appears, but the potential. God sees the gifts that you and I bring. They're all important. Together we're like a body, a body with many parts. And when each of us plays our part, the whole body is stronger for it. Amen. I have called you by your name, you are mine. More voices, number 161. Uh, Julie and I recently took a, an almost three-week trip through Ontario and out to Manitoba to <clears throat> visit my daughter and son-in-law who live on a farm in southwest Manitoba. And some years ago, I was looking out at a, a board that sat out by a granary, and it looked like an old man. And sitting beside on another post, it appeared as if there were a cat with its ears perked sitting on that post. 
and I wrote a poem, and I read it this morning simply as a reminder. We're talking about all of us bringing our particular individual gifts, but as a reminder of the importance of farmers and what they do for us. We don't always think when we sit down to eat our meal of the day the importance of where that came from and the people who tilled the land and so on. Anyway, here's the poem. The old man stands, solid, erect, his farmer cap straight on his head. Near the door to the barn, he looks off across the field. He's proud of his old homestead. There's been many a crop, some good, others not. Each spring, a fresh furrow to plow. Farming's not always easy but it's been my life's way. He smiles, I've done it somehow. Perched close nearby on the top of a post, ears perked, otherwise still, Murphy the cat watches for prey. He's getting on in his age, but no rodent is safe if it happens by old Murphy's way. And over there by the fence sit the three dogs, Tucker, Piper, and Ace. They keep watch that the cows are behaving themselves and aren't tempted to crash through the gates. A fine pastoral scene, if ever there was. A snapshot of prairie farm life. There's work and there's worry, but in balance it's good, for there's far more pleasure than strife. So here's the old man standing there by his barn and all like him who steward the soil. When we sit down at our table to eat our next meal, we should pause and give thanks for his toil. Let us pray. We are reminded, God, of the part that each of us play in this world of ours in our communities, both rural and urban. We're reminded that we are called to offer who we are for the good of the whole, to give something back to the community in which we live as a way of our thanksgiving for the privilege of being there, being here. We lift up before you the worried and troubled places of our land and our world, the places where hope seems in short supply, the places where grief plods heavily across. We think of those who are fleeing wildfires, worried if they'll have anything to come back to after the smoke is gone. We think of the neighbor down the street who's worried about a diagnosis that he's just received. We think about the friend whose hand he's held right now because their partner has died. We think, too, of the myriad of ways in which we can add something to the zest of living around us, to offer a gentle handshake or a hug or just a phone call that reminds someone that someone else cares. Be with us in all that we do and give and help us to be messengers of your love and your hope. These prayers we ask in the name of Christ who stands among us as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Joys and concerns. So all we know him by is Craig. Now Craig has been a little light in our congregation for a year or so. No, actually it's been at New Year's. At New Year's. So Craig's been a light in our life since New Year's. And whenever you come in, he's always smiling at you. Now the congregation has gotten smaller, and there's a lot of our forefathers, our church fathers and mothers that aren't here today. You know who you are. But I want to send Craig on his next journey with something from the church. Now, we call it a bit of a prayer shawl. You can set this over your new rocker when you get to your new spot, but it has a little bit of a blessing from Melville United Church, and we want you to know we, we go with our prayers. But now you can tell your story. Hi, everybody. Uh, I came here I, early in January looking for, uh, just for a change, shake it up, and uh, I spent 40 years in the basement for AA meetings, and that's more about a higher power than it is about Jesus. And, God. Uh, and I did find my answers here. I, uh, not all of my answers. I'm not a finished product by any means. I've been with this direction for a long time. But um, I, I did get some answers. Uh, I found the love of my life. She's out west. And, and so I've been purging my belongings in, in an effort to get ready to move. And so next Saturday, my son and I are piling to my car. We're, we're completely stoked. And we're, we're doing a western uh, father and son road trip. And I'm flying my son home the following so this is my last uh, opportunity to attend Melville in person and for a long time, but uh, I very much enjoyed being here. I very much enjoyed the, the, the smiles that I saw here from the people and the way I was walking. Ah, I didn't know if I could get through it. Thank you very much. We have a few birthdays. On Tuesday, I will have my own birthday. <laughs> Turn, <laughs> turning, uh, turning 76. <laughs> and uh, not afraid, afraid to say it. <laughs> Ken McCorkadale celebrates 89 years on Friday, September 1st. Larry Broom celebrates on Friday, September 1st. 39, he says. Marjorie, Marjorie Lister celebrates 92 years on Friday, September 1st. And we have an anniversary. Norman Linda Porritt celebrates 53 years on Tuesday, August 29 also. Okay. Um, good morning, it's so nice to see everyone. I haven't been here for a month or so. Um, I just wanted to share with you that um, we have, we've had Chantel McIntosh uh, as part of our church congregation for several years now. She's, she has joined in kids' church, and she goes to youth um, events, and um, she's just a lovely girl. Um, I hadn't seen her for a while in the spring, and I didn't realize that her dad was um, ill. So she called me the other day and she said that her dad had passed away, uh, Ernest, uh, Ernest McIntosh. So um, she and her mother are left and I, I feel quite bad. I feel bad that I didn't know um, he died at the end of July. So um, I'm just asking if you could keep Alice and Chantel in prayer. So thank you. I have a joy this morning and a very big thank you. The thanks goes to Tom, who, after a conversation this spring and found out that I was born and raised in Port Perry, said, I know somebody from Port Perry, Ron McMillan. And I said, hmm, I'm related to McMillan. So Tom started 
acting as the in-between between Ron and myself. And Ron and I have discovered that we are second cousins. Our grandparents were brother and sister. And it is my great joy that I was able to meet Ron today as he and his wife Janet are worshiping with us. And it's just a great joy to know that I've got another cousin. There's another anniversary this coming week, so my parents, Barry and Thelma, or Rafi as many of you know her, um, are celebrating, I believe it's 41 years on Monday. Yes. <laughs> so they're away these next, this coming week and such for an anniversary trip. morning offering will be received. Gracious God, accept these gifts that we bring and accept all the ways in which we give of ourselves. Bless these offerings and bless us for use in your service. Our closing hymn this morning is, We Are Marching in the Light of God. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, the third verse is, See a humba. Just to remind you how that goes. See a humba, kukun yen, quen coast. See a humba, kukun yen, quen coast. See a humba, kukun yen, quen coast. Got it? See a humba kukun yen quen coast. See a humba kukun yen quen coast. Now, we'll get there when we get to verse 3. So go ahead. Uh, and then do you want to have a part of that song? No, that's all right. Marching, marching, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching, marching, we are marching in the light of God. We are living in the love 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 of God. We are living, living, we are living, living, 
living we living in the light of God we are living living we are living living we are living in the light of God see a humbug and yen quen coast see a humbug and yen quen coast see a humbug and yen quen coast See a humba cook when when goes. See a humba humba. See a humba humba. See a humba cook when when goes. See a humba humba. See a humba humba. See a humba cook when when goes. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, marching. We are marching, marching. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching. We are marching, marching. We are marching, light of God. Our benediction as we leave this sacred space for another week. May we be forever thankful for the life that sustains us. May gentleness, kindness, compassion, and care. May it all be so. Now, if you'd like to turn to, I forget the number, is it 380? 380 in your hymn book. This is a song we were going, I had included in the early in the order of service, but it was thought, since it hadn't been done for quite some while at Melville, that we might be better not to do it during the service and save it to the postlude. So what's going to happen is, I'm going to sing the verses. I'm going to invite you to join in on the chorus. We're going to do the chorus twice. I'll sing it once, and then you sing it with me. Then I'll sing the verses. We'll do a chorus. Then I'm going to read the last two verses. and then we can end off with the chorus. She comes sailing on the wind. She is the spirit. Come sailing on the wind, her wings flashing in the sun. On a journey just begun, she flies on. And in the passage of her flight, her song rings out through the night. Full of laughter, full of light, she flies on. One more time. She comes sailing on the wind, her wings flashing in the sun. On a journey just begun, she flies on. And in the passage of her flight, her song rings out through the night. Full of laughter, full of light, she flies on. Silent waters rocking on the morning of our birth, like an empty cradle waiting to be filled. And from the heart of God, the Spirit moved upon the earth, like a mother breathing life into her child. Many were the dreamers whose eyes were given sight when the Spirit filled their dreams with light and form. 
Deserts turn to gardens, broken hearts found new delight, and then down the ages still she flew on. She comes sailing on the wind, her wings flashing in the sun, on a journey just begun, she flies on. And in the passage of her flight, her song rings out through the night, full of laughter, full of light, she flies on. To a gentle girl in Galilee, a gentle breeze she came, a whisper softly calling in the dark. the promise of a child of peace whose reign would never end. Mary sang the spirit song within her heart. Flying to the river, she waited, circling high, above the child now grown so full of grace. As he rose up from the water, she swept down from the sky, and she carried him away in her embrace. She comes sailing on the wind, her wings flashing in the sun. On a journey just begun, she flies on. And in the passage of her flight, her song rings out through the night, full of laughter, full of light. She flies on, last line again, full of laughter, full of light, she flies on. Thank you.